A seventy-year-old mother's helpless choice. My daughter is heartless. I am even more heartless. This is my final act of love for my daughter. As people age, elderly care is a major issue for every elderly person in the final stage of their life. After a lifetime of struggle, raising children, earning a living, weathering countless storms, and entering old age, at this time, the greatest hope is to have a peaceful old age and enjoy the remaining years. In old age, the happiest moments are when children are filial, grandchildren are around, and the family lives in harmony. But in reality, some parents have a bleak old age. They worked hard to raise their children, yet they find themselves without support in their old age, ending up living as solitary individuals. As children grow up, they forget the kindness and hard work of their parents who raised them. They think that it is only natural for parents to raise them, but whether or not they support their parents is their own choice. This leaves many parents feeling helpless. There is one such mother, whom we call Aunt Wu. Ever since she discovered that her only daughter was focused on her house and property, yet repeatedly refused to fulfill her duty to support her, she felt disheartened. Out of her final helpless love for her daughter, she made a choice even more heartless than her daughter's. To support herself in old age, her daughter was heartless, she was even more heartless. It was also to teach her unfilial daughter to learn to be a decent person, that Aunt Wu made a more heartless choice than her daughter. I, Aunt Wu, am seventy years old this year. I have an only daughter. She was a late-born child for me and my husband, born when I was forty-one years old. My husband and I cherished our hard-earned daughter as a jewel, protecting her from any grievances from childhood to adulthood. Our income wasn't high, but we never hesitated to spend money on our daughter. We sent her to college. When she got married, we bought her a car and gave her 200,000 yuan as a dowry. These dowries exhausted all our savings. Despite this, seeing our daughter happily married, we felt very gratified. My daughter and son-in-law work at the same company. The son-in-law's parents are from the countryside. When my daughter and son-in-law got married, the down payment for the marital home was paid by the son-in-law from his savings and they had a monthly mortgage of 5,000 yuan to pay. Although the son-in-law's family conditions were not good, as long as our daughter liked him, we didn't object. They were young and had plenty of time to earn money. We were confident that they would have a good life. My husband and I have a combined monthly pension of more than 8,000 yuan. This money was enough for our living expenses. We saved all the extra money, planning to leave it all to our daughter after our death as a token of our affection. The year after our daughter and son-in-law got married, our grandson was born. After our grandson was born, my husband and I got busy. Every day, like going to work, we would go to our daughter's house on time to take care of our grandson. Only after our daughter and son-in-law came home from work could we return to our own home. Whenever we arrived at our daughter's house, we would divide the work. My husband was responsible for taking care of our grandson, while I was responsible for cleaning the house, preparing baby food, and making dinner for our daughter and son-in-law. When our daughter and son-in-law came home from work, they could eat hot meals. Seeing them satisfied, our day's fatigue would vanish instantly. We never asked our daughter and son-in-law for any money for the meals we cooked at their house. We paid for the groceries and daily necessities ourselves. We also bought the grandson's milk powder, clothes, diapers, and toys. Although we spent a lot of money, our daughter and son-in-law never mentioned giving us living expenses. They didn't offer, and we didn't ask. As parents, no matter how much money we spent on our daughter, we didn't mind. Early last year, my husband often felt weak and his face would swell badly every morning. Seeing that something was wrong, I took him to the hospital for a checkup. The results shocked both of us. The doctor said my husband had uremia, a severe condition, and admitted him to the hospital immediately. After a period of hospitalization, my husband's condition finally stabilized. After discharge, he needed dialysis twice a week, which was very painful. The doctor said dialysis was just a palliative measure, for long-term results, a kidney transplant was necessary, which would cost at least 500,000 yuan. Hearing that a kidney transplant would cost 500,000 yuan, my husband was taken aback, saying his life wasn't worth that much. I persuaded him, saying that life was more important than money. Although we didn't have that much cash, we could sell our house to raise money for his treatment. Our house was over 100 square meters, 
located in the city centre, and was a school district house. If sold, it would be worth more than 3 million yuan. I told my husband that we could sell the big house and buy a smaller one, thus cashing in some money for his kidney transplant. My husband refused to sell the house, saying he was 70 years old and didn't have many years left, so it wasn't worth spending so much money on such expensive treatment. The property deed was in my husband's name, so without his signature, I couldn't sell the house. To persuade my husband to agree to sell the house, I called our daughter, hoping she would persuade him. However, our daughter showed no intention of persuading him to sell the house. She said that at his age, it wasn't worth spending so much money on such treatment. Her coldness towards her father's life made me feel particularly heartbroken. Since I couldn't sell the house, I couldn't afford my husband's treatment. After some time on dialysis, my husband's condition worsened rapidly. His health deteriorated, and it was clear he couldn't hold on much longer. I convinced him to transfer the property deed to my name. My daughter's previous indifference to his condition made me wary. I feared that if I became seriously ill, my daughter might refuse to pay for my treatment to save money. Only by keeping the property in my hands could I feel secure. My husband eventually died of uremia. Before he died, he held my hand tightly, asking me to live well and see more of this beautiful world for him. After my husband passed away, I often felt lonely and sad. My body felt increasingly unresponsive, and I was especially afraid of being alone, worrying that if something happened to me, there would be no one to take me to the hospital in time. On New Year's Day, I called my daughter, telling her I missed my grandson and had bought a lot of food. I asked her to bring her husband and our grandson over for a meal and a family reunion. My daughter said she didn't want to go anywhere and just wanted to stay at home. Since she wouldn't come, I went to her place, bringing all the food I had bought to her home, and cooked a sumptuous meal. During dinner, I told my daughter and son-in-law that I was old and my health was deteriorating. I couldn't manage to clean such a big house alone. My daughter looked puzzled and asked, A mom, what do you mean by this? You don't mean you want to live with us, do you? Looking into her eyes, I told her, A yes, that's exactly what I mean. I want to live with you and enjoy family happiness. At this moment, I noticed my daughter giving her husband a look. Understanding her signal, he said, A mom, you have such a big house. Why not live there comfortably instead of squeezing in with us? You'll be more comfortable living alone. My daughter also said, A yes, mom. We work every day. Even if you live with us, we won't have time to take care of you. I told my daughter, Er, I don't need you to take care of me. I just want to live with you. My daughter, clearly impatient, angrily said, A eh, mom, why don't you get it? We want to live as a couple without being disturbed. Her words chilled me to the bone. I thought for a moment and then said, Er, if you don't want me here, I won't trouble you. I can go to a nursing home. I'm planning to sell the house and use the money to live in the best nursing home and get the best care. Hearing that I wanted to sell the house, my daughter panicked. She quickly said, A that house is in dad's name. You have no right to sell it. I coldly looked at her and said, A the house has long been transferred to my name. I can sell it if I want, and no one can stop me. Hearing this, my daughter's face turned ashen, and she was speechless for a long time. I added, Although I'm old, my mind is still clear. I know who treats me well and who doesn't. For those who treat me well, I won't mind giving them more money. For those who don't, I won't give them a penny. My intention was to make my daughter understand that if she treated me well and was willing to take care of me, I would give her all the money from selling the house. If she didn't, she wouldn't get a cent. But my efforts didn't yield the result I wanted. My daughter still showed no intention of taking care of me. She even threatened that if I didn't give her the money from selling the house, she would never care for me again, even if I was old and sick. My daughter's heartlessness was beyond my imagination. From then on, I had no expectations of her. I thought, since she only wanted my money and didn't care about me at all, what use was such an unfilial daughter to me? I firmly told my daughter that after selling the house, she wouldn't get a penny. Even if I couldn't spend all the money in my lifetime, I wouldn't leave it to her. After my death, I would donate all the money to charity. My daughter left angrily, saying she was sure I wouldn't do that, and that as her biological mother, 
my property would eventually go to her. After my daughter left, she never contacted me again. I sold the house, got 3.2 million yuan, and moved into a carefully selected nursing home. The nursing home had excellent facilities and well-trained staff. I was very satisfied. Before moving in, I contacted my nephew to act as my family representative and sign the admission form. I also had my nephew hire a lawyer to notarize my property. The notarization stated that during my lifetime, the 3.2 million yuan would be used for my living and medical expenses. After my death, 200,000 yuan would go to my nephew, and the rest would be donated to charity. Since I moved into the nursing home, my nephew has visited me every week, chatting with me and bringing my favorite snacks. My daughter knew where I was but never came to see me. I could guess her thoughts. She probably thought I wouldn't follow through and that my money would still be hers after my death, thus avoiding her duty to support me while still getting my money. But she was destined to be disappointed because the moment she refused to support me, she lost any chance of getting my money. Although I knew my actions would lead to my daughter's resentment, I still did it because she was young and had a long way to go. If she didn't change her selfish ways, she would suffer many losses in the future. This was my final act of love for my heartless and selfish daughter. I hope to teach her that only by giving can one receive, and only by treating others sincerely can one live harmoniously and have a better future. Aunt Wu's story is over. There is a saying that overindulgence is a gentle killer, destroying a child's healthy growth. Aunt Wu's only daughter was accompanied throughout her life by excessive indulgence, which ultimately led Aunt Wu to taste the bitter fruit. Overindulged children think their parents' sacrifices are natural, and as they grow older, their exploitation of their parents becomes more excessive. When their parents can no longer meet their demands, they blame them for being incompetent. When parents lose their usefulness, these ungrateful children turn away from them. Well, that's all for today's sharing. I hope it helps you. Those who haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click subscribe so we can accompany you every day, grow together, be happy together, and slowly grow old together. See you next time.